I'm very happy to have two people here on stage with me who are experts in the field of the curatorial. Uh, Lorenzo Benedetti runs the, the Apple program. I think it's one of the oldest programs for curatorial studies. And uh, Beatrice von Bismarck initiated the course Cultures of the Curatorial at the Academy in Leipzig. Welcome. So maybe you would like to introduce yourself and tell a bit about the programs, which sound very similar, but actually they are very, very different. And I think they highlight two different aspects of the curatorial in 2015. Well, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation. It's uh, um, uh, the Apple Art Center. It's this year. Uh, there's a double jubilee. Uh, it's 40 years of the foundation of uh, 1975 by Wiesmaltz, and since 20 years there is a program for curators. So, um, as Vanessa said, it's it's one of the oldest. Not the oldest. There were basically two uh, uh, most important. Pro that they were already um, uh, running at the time it was a Whitney in New York and the, and the, mag uh, the Magasin de Grenoble in France. And basically the, the, the structure, the topology of the Apple program is uh, taken from both of them, especially the one of, of Grenoble. The uh, particularity about this program is that um, um, in 20 years it's still one of the few that it's uh, uh, based inside an institution that is an art center. So, um, since uh, several years, we uh, we, um, uh, we we are seeing an incredible growing of programs, but most of them they are based inside academies, universities. You no, know, they are uh, not inside the art centers. And and the fact that uh, a program is inside an institution that for, for the most part of the uh, energy at the time is making exhibition, put also the accent to one of the uh, elements of about curating. And, and one of the things about the, the Apple is that uh, there is a, a special um, accent on the, on the field. So uh, to work inside an institution that basically presents the work. So uh, it's, uh, the show is also one of the main aspects of this program. It's a 10-month program. Uh, the, the, there are only six participants. They are based in the city of Amsterdam. They travel the middle of people. It's a very intense schedule. But a big part then is this uh, realization of the final project, that it can be an exhibition. Most of the time it's an exhibition, but it can be something else. That is also because uh, we are creating, you know, can be a lot of different things. Uh, it's um, uh, uh, until now, there, were, there are something like 120 people. I did it. There are some people like uh, Daphne Ayas that is here. There's also the, uh, the new, uh, new uh, um, participants of next edition in the, in the room. And it's interesting to see how this small amount of people since 20 years then is creating also a kind of, uh, of uh, network. And um, what is interesting about 20 years is also to see what happened in 20 years. And um, uh, there are some elements that are still the same, but some elements that are really uh, incredible difference. Um, one of them is, of course, the incredible uh, infrastructure that since 20 years uh, is growing. What is important to say in this introduction is also uh, that the uh, start of this program was in the 90s. And maybe it's also something to say about the 90s and the curatorial, because I think if we uh, spoke about curators, we spoke a lot about this decade, uh, that in a certain way it was uh, um, uh, generating a lot of uh, concept of curating. And I think when we think about uh, curating, we think also about a kind of infrastructure. Uh, for example, in the Netherlands, in the 90s, there were a lot of um, uh, aspects that, uh, for example, the, uh, the same time of the Crater program was starting a few years before for us, Vite de Vite, was uh, um, the new Rex Academy was starting, there was the uh, Manifesta was starting in these this years, and Casco, uh, uh, back, uh, almost all the presentation institutes that are important in the, in the Netherlands were founded in the 90s. So that is, I think, it's, it's a quite in interesting element to think about uh, curators in relation with also what was actually the uh, diffusion of infrastructure of uh, spaces or, or new projects that, that curators were doing. Okay. 
Well, that's very nice that you kind of lined out the, the history a little bit of, of the curatorial programs because I think ours is relatively young and has already taken into account that there are others or there have been others for a long time. But it is relatively young, particularly in a German context, because there hadn't been one before. And out all of a sudden, at the same time, three came up um, in the last, say, six years. But it gave us, I think, a, just another legitimation or another reasoning for doing that at all, for actually installing a curatorial program. And you've, as you've already mentioned, it's called Cultures of the Curatorial, so it just tries to take on a little bit of a different um, uh, point of view in as much, at, uh, in, in as, much as it does uh, quite deliberately not so much focus on skills that you might teach, but much rather on introducing or um, offering tools to make, I very much like the previous session for that, to allow for the decision making that is necessary within the curatorial field. To allow for decision making that takes the different actors and agents within that field into account and the different conditions and relations that um, are working in it. So that might well include to ask yourself not so much how to do an exhibition, but much rather why you want to do it or why there might be a lot of other reasons not to do it. And there's many reasons for not doing an exhibition which we usually don't talk about so much. So. Um, Having said that, it's you know less about skills, more about decision making and um, acquiring the knowledge and the criticality maybe of, of doing so. The second that I issue that we took up in relation maybe to existing programs is this question of professional professionalization. Um, and you mentioned that at the starting of the whole session. And I would say that um, uh, the, the course that we run is as much about professionalization as it is about deprofessionalization. And that has to do with a very specific relation to the history of, shall we say, the curatorial hype. Um, by which I mean the fact that, on the one hand, it is rooted very much in the whole um, rise and, and, and extension of the art field since the 60s. So you have an, an enormous amount of new exhi exhibiting institutions within the, within the 60s, not only art museums, but you know, cultural institutions such as the Kunsthalle, for example, but that are dedicated to exhibiting um, art. On the one hand, so quite naturally, there was a need for much more um, people to actually feed into that newly widened system. On the other hand, it uh, correlates, as far as the history is concerned, exactly with the transgressions and trans appropriations between the artistic field and the curatorial field. So a number of tasks, a number of role models, a number of ideas of what you do within the cultural fields were taken over from artists by curators and from curators by artists. So at a certain point, it's not, I mean, I'm talking about the tradition of concept art and the tra tra tradition of in, um, institutional critique. So these two historic uh, developments, I think, run uh, parallel to one another and are very much feeding into this kind of new idea of what a curator might be. So you have a deprofessionalized um, idea on the one hand and professionalized on the other, and that means the curator is very much subjected to the same, shall we call it, ambivalence towards education as artists are. I mean, there, we all know this question of whether art can be taught at all or not, and can curating be taught at all or not? And I think we have to take that into account. So I think ASICS, in an interesting way, is a kind of intensifier of that ambivalence between a professional and a deprofessionalization, because it has to take into account that, on the one hand, artists, and we have heard about that uh, in the previous sessions as well, maybe do not necessarily relate or not have in their central focus the idea of um, doing what they do ethically proper, 
it can be a part of their work, but it doesn't have to be. While when you look at um, the ICOM manual, for example, that has been actualized in 2013, or when you look at the magazine uh, that appeared for the manifesto and was dedicated to curatorial ethics, you have the feeling that there is a very clear idea of what these ethics might be and who you are responsible to. So I think one of the things that we really have to talk about is responsibility. What might that be? And in the terms of those ICOM and Manifesto magazine, um, uh, in the terms of those two texts, you have the feeling it's very clear it's a responsibility towards art, it's a responsibility towards a public, and it's a responsibility towards an institution. Very rarely you find artists, very rarely you find sponsors, very rarely you find collectors, but I mean those were just three positions in the field that you might mention as well, And but you can go on doing that. So responsibility in an age where all these categories that you seem to be responsible for are not really very clear to get defined anymore because what is an artwork in a digitized, mobilized, globalized, ephemeralized, process-oriented, and so on, art world? What is it and what are you responsible for? And what are all these different, um, shall I call them, quasi-actors, quasi-agents, quasi-whatever, uh, what, what are they? Uh, what are we dealing with? So this would be one part, and then part of that is the whole idea of subjectivization, which I think goes a very uh, closely, feeds very closely into the whole question of are we dealing with a creative position or are we not dealing with a creative position? Um, and subjectivization always being connected with, you know, setting up new hierarchies, setting up new exclusions, setting up new selections, and um, also uh, having a very strong feeling about um, your own position within the field. So when I say deprofessionalization, maybe what I would like to call it alternatively is a professionalization of relationality. Um, that means a, um, calling a curator maybe the epitome of the relational position in the art uh, field because it is a position in which you very much have to take into account the whole relations that exist within the field. And so professionalization of that could mean to actually look into the analysis um, and the generation of relations within the field and this with a kind of self-reflexive mode. Is there time for these considerations for the people who participate in this very dense, the upper courses? Well, yeah, it's um, in a way, what is very interesting about uh, the combination to have an art center with a um, curatorial program is that uh, each time there is an exhibition that is questioning basic thing like uh, what is an institution, what is an exhibition, what is a curator. And in a certain way, it's very healthy for an institution to have this position of a, you know, mostly you know, a younger generation you know, from very different parts of the world. And that was a uh, kind of way to, to define um, the, 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 the landscape of the arts uh, that since you know, the, the early 90s, it was immediately opening to a concept of territory that was different of no, just Europe, no, the Western base that was most until the, the 80s and then and the 90s was also this, this um, moment that there, there was a very international uh, internationalization of the, of the profession, which basically uh, 20 years later is it's starting to be more and more uh, stronger, this, this, uh, this situation. And I see it also now with the uh, last years, there are always more people coming from countries that since several years ago were not uh, really part of a kind of discourse. And that I think it's, it's a really new thing what is happening and also about one of the topic of this panel is what is the future of curating, what is happening when there's this incredible expansion of programs and um, there's a lot of, if you, if you only 
think about how much literature this, you no, know, this, this in the last five years or seven years. In, in the 90s, there was no barely some books about curating, and the, really a few. And now this is an incredible expansion. But there is also a, a completely different uh, geopolitical situation where it puts the, the the figure of the curator in a very interesting role. What is you no? Know, what is the difference between position and in the in the world? I think that that. F being a curator uh, uh, in, in, in a part of the world like this one, but you can you know, see hundreds of, of exhibition in a, you know, in a few, few hundred kilometers. It's very different than the people that are coming from condition that is very complicated. And this, and this thing is, um, is uh, I think it's, it's quite, quite you know, if you think about the ethics, you know, what, what is I think it's interesting to see it you know, in a way how it c can be kind of an expansion of the idea of creator related to different condition in the, in the in, in the in the world. In the same time, we have also you now, if we have this kind of geographical ex uh, expansion, we have also this thing that there is a very interesting parallelism between um, the, this exposure of of, of programs uh, for curators that is really uh, have the same uh, grow of the studies about um, exhibition history. So at the moment that there are enormous amount of programs. Uh, and books about creating. There are a lot of books about history of creating. So we have not only kind of broader sense of geography of creating, but we have also a different concept of what is the time of creating. So that means that basically there's a kind of retroactive aspect of creating where uh, the idea of studying exhibition that I've uh, made uh, 10, 20, 40 years ago, or uh, thinking that actually that are the best exhibition even if we never saw it, or restage this exhibition, rethink that it's possible to uh, recreate that exactly moment of that exactly combination of artworks because we believe in a concept of original thing. So we, we believe that there was original moments you know, uh, where that was possible to create a, um, a historic exhibition. I think there are quite important elements that, that show how there is a kind of expansion of the concept of creating. Yeah, but when you say is that time, I think there's th that's maybe not the question, but the question is what are the conditions under which time is structured? And when I said decision making, I think it's a decision you make. Um, I'm not saying, I'm not naively assuming that you can make free decisions about all these things, but it's, um, you have to uh, weigh um, what is the, 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 the stronger and what is the less uh, that, that you want to consider and that you want to um, take into account at all. Um, and timing, I think, is, is very crucial. But what you just mentioned, I think, is very interesting that it, indeed it has become much more popular now to look at how exhibitions had, have taken place. But interestingly enough, these exhibitions are looked at as if they had come into being as fully-fledged works on their own without actually looking at the practice that has put them together and how meaning production has taken place. And I think in that respect, I think it's extremely valuable that we start this research um, because it means that, um, you, I don't know, in one of the previous sessions we talked about having a wonderful concept and then people kind of uh, walk about and try to find illustrations for that concept. And I think this is exactly what we are not interested in. Uh, what we're interested in is how does meaning production work in a quartile way? How do things that are connected with one another, and I don't just mean only exhibits, but of course, to start with, it's exhibits. How do these things actually produce meaning? When we, for example, had the discussion about the institutions in Vienna, how does a specific institution relate to the other institutions and define its practice in relation to that. So it might well, for example, be that you show the same exhibition twice in one institution in another, and then you look at or do th whether the exhibits actually change in their meaning. Um, so it's, it's not just the exhibits themselves. I mean, it's the, the whole way of making connections that it's involved in the curatorial practice. And to look at how that works, I think that has been um, underestimated for a long time. 
I mean, for, for me, what also one of the big advantages of uh, looking back and properly researching these iconic or not iconic um, exhibitions from the past is um, that uh, you find models and from, from a time where yesterday's panel was called the total ecumenization of art hasn't happened yet. And then you, I think, get a feeling for certain structures of curating today. Um, I'm very interesting, and that's a bit mean to switch it from like this topic to the next one. The Apple also has a new gallery program. So a gallerist program. So um, it's not only about the professionalization of the, the curator, but also about the profanization of the of the gallerist under one roof. And um, I think, I mean, for me, it's, it's very interesting to uh, also investigate um, the field of uh, the commercial market and to, in a way, like, train people um, to, to, to become a gallerist um, under the roof of an art institution. Maybe you can elaborate a bit about that and also how these two are connected because um, I find that a very interesting um, step. Yeah, that will be actually a panel in itself because it's such a complex uh, argument. And then the, um, the, the, um, the galleries program, so it's uh, three years old, it, it's, uh, so it's very young and it's actually only in this kind of typology to exist. It's uh, in co-production of the Fair Gallery, which is, um, uh, there are four galleries, it's uh, a GB Agents in Paris, uh, Yamot in Brussels, Hollybush Garden in London and uh, uh, Raster in Warsaw. Uh, they were working really together and then there was this idea to create a program for galleries. The, the base uh, to, to create that is to um, see the gallery space as a space of uh, ex experiments, as can be the space of the uh, art center of the museum. And um, historically, we can see that that was an important element because you now, since modern times, uh, galleries they were always a very important uh, platform for, uh, for uh, artists that were starting you know, uh, exhibition. If you think you know, about, um, even if we see books about uh, exhibition history, we see that some of that exhibitions took place in private galleries and only at the time of the conceptual arts and between this in the end of the 60s and beginning of the 70s almost half of the important exhibition that this group of artists did was uh, inside uh, commercial galleries there were you no know, people like under Fisher that was all they were all organizing very important exhibitions it was wide wide space that we were starting to think about a kind of um, hybrid typology of of, uh, of the gallery art center and there are a lot of this kind of example and this is actually the reason to think about how there is not really a kind of line that divides the experiment between commercial and not commercial, but uh, in a way also, if you work as an institution close to artists, of course you cannot know the artists also they, they have you no know, this situation that they work uh, inside uh, the, the the institutional world and the galleries world because you no know, they, they it's also a way to how they they can survive. So there is there is I think there there is a uh, there is not not a division that is black and white between these two worlds, but it's a for sure there is a very ethical point of view and and this ethical point of view is how much you think that as a curator um, as an institution you want to um, and that I think is a little bit the ethics of creating is how, how much you think you can uh, defend or you can uh, uh, amplify an idea of an artist and how can you be as an institution and infrastructure the closest possible to that and and in a certain way it's 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 a way to um, to open also the, the situation close close to the artist and to help sometimes positions that that are not so um, still not so easy and so the choice the choice not to see what is the important thing of what is your program or what is falling on, on what is the, the most important thing are based about the urgency of, of decisions and that is the reason that, that this program is um, is as important because uh, at the end is the quality that that is in a gallery is and a commercial gallery is can be you know very important for the for the in general for the art but this could also lead to like a deep professionalization and a positive sense of, of the idea of, of, of commercial galleries. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's uh, one of the reasons also because uh, of course one one of the trend of the market is you no know, is logical is this kind of homologization of what is working in the arts then it's uh, no it's used because it's working in the art market so uh, it's it's, it's a, also a way to create a, di a dif yeah, differentiation also in, the, in, the, in this kind of um, uh, sector. 
I, I think that leads maybe back to an issue that we had earlier on where um, there was the idea of strictly separating the positions that you take within the art field. And maybe I want to kind of modify this a little bit because I'm not so strictly for a separation, but I'm for a very distinct decision on what the position is you want to speak from. Do you want to speak from the position of a gallerist? Do you want to speak from the position of a curator? And then to think about what that actually implies, because it's not so fixed, it's not clear. I mean, we have uh, gallery uh, galleries that, as you said, have done exhibitions that, or as you said, that, that have made history. Um, and you have now uh, galleries that show things that they can't possibly sell, but they do that for different reasons. On the other hand, you have curators that um, would not uh, shy away from writing for gallery catalogues or would not shy away for, um, you know, a, a lot of other quite obvious entanglements with um, economic um, interest. And I think as it's, it's extremely um, important to keep in mind what the actual um, doings are that you choose to take on. By which I mean, it's, it's not so clear that a curator's work lim is limited to this, that or the other, but there's so many overlappings between curatorial work and other professions within the field, because I mean, writing for a catalog that you have uh, for your own show is uh, sometimes, you know, having the same effect as writing it for a gallery. Um, all I'm saying is um, the sensitivity, to, to train the sensitivity to look into the effects of the different doings that you choose to take on. I think that is a very important thing. So, and then you it allows you to take a position within the field um, with all the implications that, or the entanglements that might bring it with you, with it. But I think that's extremely difficult nowadays because for me, it's still not to say like a mystery, but this, this, this field of the curatorial or like what is a curator, it's, it's, it's actually really like difficult to find. I mean, there is the, the simple uh, explanation like curators organize exhibitions, but I think that's just like, you know, the, the tip of the iceberg. And uh, there's lots of uh, other work um, in, in involved in um, setting up an exhibition, starting from like f fundraising or like uh, getting, getting an idea of, of the current art scene, um, networking, um, thinking about public audience, um, thinking about institutions to institute, etc. So how do you position the curator in this, in this field? Because I mean, a, a, a curator is, uh, I, I think it's only this like, uh, lonely heroes from the 60s who did everything themselves. And now, as a curator, you are instantly um, involved um, in relation with lots of other people from lots of other fields. Yeah, I think that the, the, the curator actually um, is coming from, from the institution. So the, the first curator were working in museums, no? in the, the, from the 50s, 60s, they were organizing many exhibitions and then there's a certain moment that there was this kind of, uh, you know, to be independent, so to don't be belong to the institution. And uh, not, not so uh, later from that moment that was in the 60s, um, to, to you know, to have uh, this, this um, independent uh, figure. Uh, there was this, uh, this, this concept, and, and I think that the, 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 the foundation of the Apple was, was one of, of these moments where uh, a curator or a curatorial position was the base to uh, build an institution. So basically you have from you now the, the, the curator coming from the institution, working for institution, they have, have some rules, to the independent curator that is creating you now in the different places, uh, the projects, from uh, to the point that the curator need a kind of space and to, to shape an institution around a concept. And that was actually the apple at the, in, in the 70s, you know, that that had to shape this institution around, uh, for example, new uh, forms of art at the time, so performance, uh, video art, and uh, other experiments. And this uh, thing is also that more and more than is this the figure of the curator is, is a kind of institu institutional figure itself. So the curator is institution more than 
uh, basically to have you know the the, the situation as a, as a, as a as an anonymical uh, part that is i think it's a, it's a kind of change that has happened in the in, um, yeah and in, in probably to to create this this concept of the institution as a way to deal with uh, with the curatorial i think i wouldn't position the curator i think that's um not possible because it has a lot to do with the question of what do you actually do? What do you choose to do and what are the, um, the tasks you take, take on? And we had, again, in one of the former sessions, this question of um, how much is curating related to communicating? And I'm not sure that is actually a different thing, but you, ha you make a decision about that. And you make a decision whether it has a lot to do with making things public, whether it makes has a lot to do with making connection, whether it has to do with staging, um, whether it has to do with uh, being true to art, or you know, all these kind of things. That has, it has to do with that. And I think what um, today's curatorial practice implies is to p find a position from where you want to speak. And again, I very much liked the idea of a contributing member to discourse as a description for a curatorial position as much as for all other positions within the field. And you have certain um, techniques in which you can do this contributing um, within the field. Do you feel responsible for the people who graduate? Because, I mean, coming back to like uh, uh, my, my, my first ideas, I mean, I see it's kind of like over overabundance of um, curators around and in this um, expanding field of the curatorial, we have the impression that almost everything is curated now. Um, maybe we also need um, a new, not to say label, but like a, a, a new role model of the of the curator, because I mean that's why we call this profession curator. And um, everybody takes it for granted to know what a curator is, and in a way, this this broad field behind it, and also this um, reflexive discourse on the idea of the culture of the curatorial um, is missing, and and it more like not in the academic discourse, but in the in the uh, uh, everyday uh, discourse. Well, I I do feel responsible in to a certain extent, um, and particularly to the extent that I think what what I would like to be able to offer is this um, notion or this understanding of the conditions and relations under which you work when you work in the curatorial field. Um, I don't think that we need a new role model. I think we rather need a um, deconstruction of existing models and to analyze them very closely and see what the implications of the different attributions to them are. You know, when we talk about the curatorial hype, when we talk about uh, the curators have become as uber curator, so incredibly important, and so on. I think this is because of certain attributions to that role, and it's, it's worthwhile looking at the attributions and at the basis on which they have been um, assigned to, to that uh, role. I think it's much more important to look at what we do and what, these, what the doing implies, what effects it has, and under which conditions it's taking place. Um, so when you ask about feeling responsible, then I look very closely at what I do um, and how that kind of affects uh, w what the people I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with um, uh, is, uh, are concerned with. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, uh, it's, it's important to, to think, I mean, of course, there's a responsibility about uh, kind of idea that, that you want to also to, to have about what, what, is, uh, what is important, what is urgent, but then there's also a moment where you see that the um, um, art system is expanding so much, and there is so much need of people also that are working. Uh, no, they have also a kind of professionalization uh, in, in, the, in the in the art world, and that is, I think, it's something that uh, that is uh, going to grow. And like I think also the the um, when we talk about curators, we talk about mostly exhibitions. No? 
I think also the exhibition is a, is a media that is still, you know, like Kundera was saying about the, the, the Roman, was saying that this was still something that was, was at the beginning. And I think still now exhibitions are still at the beginning. Now we are just starting to study exhibition from, from a history, but it's, this is very recent. An exhibition as a tool, as we think today, exhibition is still, is still a kind of a very beginning of a moment of, that of course it can change, and that is also important to take as a responsibility. It can change completely, it can be you know, rethinking the whole model of being a creator, making exhibition, dealing with artists, dealing with public, dealing with institutions, but I think it's really, there is a lot of things to, to, uh, to do. Yeah, but now I switch roles and talk uh, about uh, my daily routine because I think this is, uh, and then we then we all re-enter the, the um, area of uh, cultural ethics. I mean, uh, it can be very pragmatic, and uh, you, you hardly have time to start this like reflection, which also implies that you have to step back what you actually do and look at it from like a different perspective in order to figure out how this like deprofessionalization could look like. I mean, that's that's my, my, my daily struggle. But I think responsibility has a lot to do with taking a distant position to what you do and who you're doing it to or what you're doing it to. I know exactly. <laughs> Our initial plan for this conference was that we have 45 minutes with a panelist on stage and then we have 15 minutes for questions from the audience. And I see the unique chance that now we have time for you. And I'm sure with so many curators in the audience, there is questions. Um, I'm thinking about <clears throat> these programs being mostly grad programs and largely the way art school is kind of legitimized is that even if you don't become an artist, you're equipped with a great set of decision-making skills. The same goes for liberal arts educations. And so basically I'm wondering if this is what the function of curatorial programs is, is to basically make decisions, how does that kind of necessitate it as a grad program that is past undergraduate education and an extra, in some cases, $50,000? Well, the Apple <laughs> is uh, not so expensive. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's still, I mean, it's still, for, for, it's still expensive. It's 7,000 euros a year. And uh, so it, it could be less, uh, but it's, it's not, it's not you cannot uh, compare it with uh, Americans of Anglo-Saxon models that are much more expensive, and um, and it's basically not really a kind of postgraduate thing. You can so it's a little bit. I think it's not really fitting in this, uh, um, yeah, in this uh, structure. Yeah, um, same here. We uh, um, the students pay eight hundred euros a year. So that is not comparable to anything that I know of in England or in the States. And it's not, I mean, it does call itself an MA program, but um, it's not meant uh, to feed into the professionalized world necessarily in terms of knowing exactly where one goes after that. On the contrary, the people in the course do have very different degrees, starting with the BA to an MA to a PhD. And very different disciplinary backgrounds between sociology, um, dance studies, art history, art, um, architecture, whatever. The, 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 the question for or the, when they apply, the main thing for us is that they have to have um, an idea, a vision of why the quartile might mean anything to their own practice. And um, I think on that basis, it is, I understand, in terms of the American uh, education system, a luxury to do this because it takes you out of your profession for, it's, it's um, a course that can do while you actually work. So you do parallel and takes you out of the existing pragmatics um, that, that you've talked about uh, of everyday uh, life. I'm not saying of everyday curating because it's not clear that they actually come from curating at all. 
uh, that takes you out of that and allows you to step back and allows you to, pay, uh, to build up that distance towards the practice that you have and that you maybe want to develop. So from what you're saying, it sounds like it actually would be good for people who are already curating because it could be like a remedial course for problematic curators. Um, as I said, um, you don't have to have a problem with your own job to apply. Um, but I think what we would like people to have is a wish, a need that something could be different. And whether that's your own job or whether that's your own personality or whether that's the idea of how you can interact with the world, doesn't really matter. But you have to think that the curatorial maybe might offer you something to encounter that, to tackle that, so to speak. Hello, thanks for the talk. I have one question about this, when you said that you get more and more curatorial students from, let's say, Southeast Asia or something like that. Uh, on which knowledge base you teach them? Yeah, this is a very good, um, <laughs> very good question. I mean, uh, they, um, of course, the course is uh, is uh, the program is made uh, in Amsterdam is is, is uh, a program that uh, yeah you you apply because you want to do it and um, so the the thing is uh, is is, is uh, the the way how. Um, you can you can get some tools also to uh, uh, to create something in places where it's quite complicated to uh, operate and I, it's it's yeah it's about what is happening in, in the in the last uh, several years that it's uh, um, that there are a lot of in very interesting situation of creators that create uh, institution in in you know, in different parts of the world. Often they are also fundraised by uh, the West, you know, by you know, institutions that are giving money for several projects. But they can operate in contexts where they are not, it's not so easy to otherwise to be a curator. And of course, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, there, there's uh, a lot of perspective about curating. They are still not very uh, maybe Western you know, from a point of view. But I mean, it's... it's uh, a, a, a it's not that there is a, uh, a kind of ch changing of this perspective, but uh, I don't know if it was the question. Is, um, but, but because there is then following immediately another question, how you identify what is an institution which could work there? Yeah, it's not it's me that I have to, it's, it's, it's them that I have to do it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, then it's uh, the people, I mean, the, the, um, several requests to do the, the to, to, um, to attend the program is that they want to create something in places that they are not uh, institutions. So uh, then what kind of institution, of course, is, is the people that they want to do it from that country. They like, uh, they, have, they have an idea what they think is necessary, is urgent to do in this country, which is not, it's not uh, that that we uh, not that, that, that we are teaching what kind of institution, but there's a kind of urgency in a country where there's really nothing. But no, there is no there is communication. There, there are people that they have ideas what it is, and they uh, have also the um, they have also the the uh, the target uh, to uh, the goal to achieve something in other places that that normally they have not the infrastructure that we have you now in this part of the world. Um, I would like to ask a question which was actually talked in the previous panel and it would be what would um, an unethical uh, curatorial approach be for you? Unethical. Thanks. I objected to that question already in the session before because I think we're not talking about unethical be uh, behavior. We're talking about ethics in 
the context of curatorial work, which doesn't mean if you don't consider ethics, it's not unethical. You see, that's why I thought in the previous session I, I don't quite agree with the question. But I think we have answered the unethical also in the previous question, which would of course be, as you as has been meant before, to, to close the show two days before, but it would also mean just not being um, considerate to the interests and well-beings of those you're dealing with, and that could be on very general terms. That could be in relation to the public, in relation to the institution, and in relation to the artists and the artworks. And that's, I think, exactly what I meant when I said what we try to teach is this awareness of the interrelations that you are necessarily um, dealing with when you deal uh, with curatorial practice. Yeah, I think that um, um, also that I was doing uh, this year a, c a case study about uh, boycotting and then you can think also about boycotting as a kind of way to use ethics in a certain way to no participate or don't participate to several situation because you have an ethic. But it's interesting to see how this idea of boycott, it changed completely from where you are. So uh, we have an idea here maybe, but the other part of the world is another idea of boycotting because they have other uh, concept. So it's quite complicated to uh, to to know have a general idea or concept about ethics. I think. Yeah, just, just I, mean I wonder if it's maybe not more interesting not to talk about ethics or unethics, but about ethical conflicts you are coming through as a curator all the time because you are in between of many structures. No, you're you're not only working with the artist. It was mentioned before. You're working in a in a structure of. Uh, it could be a biennial, it could be an institution, whatever. There are uh, restrictions we are coming through, there are, um, uh, there's money pressure, so you can't or you can pay artists, etc., etc. You can or can't show pieces. So, so how do you deal not with the idea what would be very um, ethical or very unethical, but how do you deal or how do you teach to deal with ethical conflicts? What, what I would mention, like to mention or emphasize uh, when we came up with the title Cultural Ethics, which really started as a working title and then became the real title. I mean, the, the concept of ethics for me is um, the reflection of um, your actions, implying that something might be wrong in a certain situation or right in another situation. So something unethical would, for me, to be like ignorant and just ignore this constant process of reflection. And I think uh, we, we, we can't, I, would, I just want to avoid this like black and white, this is ethical, this is non-ethical for me. It's, it's about like considering what, what you do and, and reflecting what you do and also look at the different shades of gray. Is there also something about uh, this ethics? And no, because there also the qu question we had before that was you did mention about political correct, you know, which uh, sometimes can be a kind of very problematic thing from the art field because you know, to be politically correct is also you know, to um, to deal with things that are not really related to, to your field, but you know, they are doing with, with you no. Know, then you you became a medium for other things, which are, and there's also a kind of thing to maybe to change. The, the, the idea of political correct to be curatorial correct. <laughs> I, I, I think the, 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 the question is really, that's the focus of the question, how do we deal with ethical conflicts? And that have, has a lot to do with where you see your responsibility and what kind of uh, hierarchy you make between the different responsibilities you have. And um, I think when you look at um, the fact that curatorial work has a lot to do with making things public, then I think my answer would be that if you make something public and have invited it to that process of becoming public, then it's probably the first uh, issue that you have to take care of is that this is happening in a responsible way to those you have invited to become part of that process. And that means people as much as, as things. Um, but it's, it, I think it's a very situational decision you have to take for every um, 
new project that you are involved in or for every new institution or for every new situation that you find yourself in. But I think this moment of making things public, I think that th there you have to have the, the prime uh, responsibility. Hi, um, you've been talking about decision making and I think this is a very, um, uh, very uh, much a skill that a curator has to have in a, uh, any kind of uh, scenario, uh, being gal gallery or biennial or exhibition in museums, you have to take decisions on what you, you want to exhibit and who you want to invite. And you talked about in, in your program you want to teach this skill not just a tool on how to make exhibitions or how, but actually why to make them and how to take this decision. So I was thinking um, first, like what kind of tools you teach for this and if there's something uh, related, for example, in business school, they have to deal with decision making as well and they have any kinds of uh, strategies on how to teach students how to do this. So in your curatorial program, I would like to know if you have uh, any tips? Mm, I'm not saying that decision making is specific to the curatorial field. I'm saying that what we try to do is to, um, uh, yeah, to uh, teach, I mean, yeah, no, maybe to offer is I think the word I use and I, l I prefer, to offer tools which allow you to come into a situation where you can consider the different facts that are part of a decision-making process and ev evaluate them in relation to one another. And of course, that is something that you could find in any educational situation, uh, no matter for what professional discipline. However, what I think in uh, the, the particular program that we're teaching is specific, is that we try to look at cultural practice in terms of a field. And by that I mean uh, in terms of a, uh, of a relation between curators, or the position of curators, I should say, and all the other positions within the field as a dynamic, but maybe even competitive, um, uh, way of relating to one another. And there to look at the specificities of that field that allow you to make decisions in the first place. So it's very much about theoretical um, uh, work, about thinking, about trying to, uh, being able to analyze the structures, the relations, the conditions, the preconditions, and so on, the history, um, which then might, you know, um, Often new perspectives in which you react to the encounters you make in the field. Yeah, I agree about this. Uh, this, this thing is, um, and also I think what is important for the program of the Apple is the um, uh, practice of uh, meeting people, looking at exhibition, making studio visits, and creating a lot of elements that can also um, yeah, open <laughs> your your concept about what is what is. Uh, being a curator. I mean, I'm, I'm not totally convinced about this uh, idea of curator as a translator because uh, it's, uh, I think there's a kind of uh, author, author, authorial, author, authoric element uh, behind it. But it's, um, in a certain way, it's, of course, you have to, to mediate uh, context and you have to have a large range of inputs uh, also in order to, to then develop and, and create something. Do you think that there are any authorial elements in curatorial practice? Yes, but uh, there the, the are, are. But of course, uh, I think that the, like, like an artist, uh, also a curator has to be inspired by something. And the inspiration can be, of course, you can also walk on the streets and you can read the newspaper, but I think also in the field, in the pro it's, it's also you, yeah, you have also a lot of elements to, to get inspired. Yeah. There's I'm one last question. This. I'm aware of that, uh, that we're uh, almost at the end of this panel, um, but now that we've been here for almost, uh, well, not, not constantly, obviously, but, but started this 24 hours ago, and uh, for, for, as I understand it, are talking about ethics for the first time, there's, there's something I'd like to add. 
um, because I very much disagree with, with the view of the panel, um, as in that I don't think that, uh, that ethics in, 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 in curating are, 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 are restricted simply to, um, to, to the interpersonal field, but, but I think that there is, um, that the, that there is an ethical question or, or many ethical questions that are very inherent uh, to the practice of curating. And I'd like to give just one example. Uh, for instance, I, I visit exhibitions um, that have an exhibition architecture uh, as to force people to move in a certain way, for people to duck, for instance, to be, to be able to see the exhibition at all. And while I, I like to move myself towards an artwork, if I'm interested in it, um, to, to be able to see it better, to see more of it, um, I think that that is a very good example of an ethical problem as in enforcing action on a viewer um, by a curatorial praxis. I have never said that it's just a matter of interpersonal uh, relations, and I agree entirely. I think it's making up relations, and relations are not restricted to people. Relations are what connects one thing with another thing, with a space, with a discourse, with another site, with a context, whatever. It's a c making a relation and defining that relation. And in the, con in the case that you just described, it's, it's defining a relation between the visitor and the, or the viewer and the things to get viewed um, in a very specific way. So I think you take over responsibility for defining this particular relation that can be more or less ethical. It can be maybe um, um, putting some violence in the in the field, and I think that has happened. Um, but but yeah, I agree. It can also be a curatorial statement that they would want to you know, let look people just for a few seconds to something, and then they there, there is a, I think always a kind of way how you can be free in a space and work how you want. But then there's also a way how you yeah there's all yeah there's a kind of uh, way to read an exhibition and of, co of course you can read in a different way but there is always a kind of trying to give you an input but yeah I don't know we will continue to talk about all these issues anyway either later today or tomorrow so let's have some coffee and fresh air